For the past 21 years, I've been waiting for HGTV to give me my own room makeover show, and it hasn't quite happened yet. So in the meantime, I'm just doing as many room makeovers as I possibly can. I promise I am working on my own apartment makeover, but I am being such a little anal- I don't- mm, nope, that wasn't the right word to call myself. I'm being a bit of a perfectionist about it. So in the meantime, I'm making over David's bedroom, which is like middle school Ashley, a little ugly, confused, and desperately in need of a glow up. So without further ado, I'm heading over to Home Depot to play my favorite game of how long can I shop for hardware without getting harassed and or patronized by 60 year old men. The answer is usually not that long. I love this game so much. Uh, let's get started. <laughs> We're gonna redo the floors with some hard wood. We're gonna get some paint to repaint the walls. We're gonna build some shelves out of some wood and some six inch steel nipples. Yes, that is what they're called. And we're gonna fill some holes with some caulk. Drywall caulk, that is. Okay, I promise I'm done now. Come over here. Hi, I'm David. Room on three, room on three. One, two, three, room! room. <laughs> First and foremost, we are getting rid of this ugly ass carpet. As some of you might know, carpets and frass are not a good mix. Do you think there's a whole handle of vodka inside this carpet? I if think there's at least out? four. <laughs> we could probably drink up and get real drunk. <laughs> Let's rip this baby out. One, look like two, three, fuck it. My darling, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. David's rat has two cats that are named Chad and Brad. <laughs> Alright, the carpet and the carpet liner have all been removed. Underneath, we found a disturbing amount of mold. So, we picked up these masks. Oh, let's do a Home Depot try on haul. So, I really like the blue accent strap on this. I think it would pair really well with just like a simple pair of denim or maybe like a twirly skirt for that industrial feminine juxtaposition. Okay, let's get to disinfecting because we love not getting respiratory diseases from mold. Yeah. They might do a heart for you. <laughs> Alright, next up, we have to install our laminate flooring. So installing hardwood is basically like putting together a puzzle. Except it's a giant puzzle that covers your entire floor, you can't start with the corners, you have no reference image, and you have to cut your own pieces yourself. So just like the worst puzzle you could possibly imagine. So the first part is kind of easy. Laminate planks come with these interlocking edges. So all you have to do is slide in the horizontal edge and then press down the plank to lock in place. It gets a little bit complicated when you get to the edges, which is where you need to cut the planks to size. I used a knife and this right angle thingy to mark where I needed to make a cut. Luckily at the frat, they have a circular saw, but they do not have any clamps. So instead we're weighing it down with a gallon of paint and another box of laminate because you do what you gotta do. Probably don't do this at home. After miraculously emerging with my appendages still attached, I locked our freshly cut piece in place. And there you go. Now we just continue that for seven more hours until our entire floor is covered. And from there on out, it was a pretty simple rinse and repeat process with the exception of this special 90 degree piece we had to cut to fit around the edge of the L-shaped room. You know you've been working hard when your boobs are literally just completely covered in sawdust and David hasn't even been touching them. Last piece. David's doing the honors. You call yourself a free spirit. I gotta say, for two people who have absolutely no experience in construction whatsoever and who were cutting wood literally with a bucket of paint as a clamp, I think it came out pretty well. As long as you don't look at the edges of this floor, which came out a little bit janky because I just didn't measure everything perfectly. Luckily we have our fr oh! I have this, which is called a quarter round. It is essentially like a band-aid for the edges of your wood or just like a really good full coverage concealer, you know? I measured out each side of the room and then marked on my molding where I wanted to make a cut. After playing another fun game of, will Ashley and David lose a finger today? Who the hell knows? We nailed the molding into place with some small finishing nails. And I gotta say, we also kinda nailed, but um, 
<laughs> this hardwood installation, if I may say so myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you a little suck up for love. Hello and welcome to probably the jankiest wall in this entire room. This is a pure styrofoam wall. It has a ton of holes in it. It's half painted black, half green. It's silver up top. Really weird situation. So I figured what better way to cover up styrofoam than with more styrofoam. This is my precious little baby from my last room makeover. I spent like two days burning this brick pattern into a piece of styrofoam and probably lost a lot of brain cells to styrofoam fumes. But let's not think about that right now. Anyways, a couple months ago, I moved out of my old apartment and I've been looking for a new home for my styrofoam baby. And I figured this would be the perfect thing for David's wall. I think he'll be a good adoptive father and I'll get visiting rights occasionally when I come to see him and then I can be reunited with my baby. Yes, I am strangely attached to a piece of styrofoam, okay? But I spent a long time making it. <laughs> <laughs> to install my faux brick wall, I trimmed the styrofoam to size with a box cutter and then nailed it into place with some small finishing nails. If you don't conveniently have some old faux brick laying around from a past apartment makeover, they also sell pre-made faux brick sheets at Home Depot that you can buy and apply the same technique to. Lo and behold, there was another weird styrofoam patch on the other side of the room. Since this is a smaller patch, I just ended up smoothing out the holes with an aggressive amount of drywall spackle. This is like the same stuff that you use to fill a little nail hole in the wall, except I was filling like 10 cubic feet worth of wall Swiss cheese. And to finish off the day, we finally covered up the 10 different infuriating half-ass paint jobs on this room with one full juicy ass of a paint job. Cause now I know you've been cheating, I'm a sucker for love. Hello and welcome to day two of our room makeover. Today we are tackling David's true nemesis. This fucking cabinet system. I hate them. They're terribly painted. They're an utter waste of space. Basically, David has been itching to tear out these cabinets for so long, but whoever built them put them in so sturdily. They're like on a platform. They're painted in by like 10 layers of paint. <laughs> They're nailed in. Tackling the whole cabinet system a was a little too much for us today, so. Yeah. Cabinets one, David and Ashley, zero. So we settled for just tearing out this little bottom section, since this is by far the most awkward storage space. And we're gonna turn it into a little kitchenette area. There is conveniently an outlet right over here, so David can plug it in his fridge. We're gonna build him some shelves. As for the rest of the cabinets, even though we have to keep the frame, we're gonna clean them up, paint them, make them look a lot nicer. So hopefully you will be able to look at them and not be super infuriated. Yeah. Just mildly infuriated. Let's get demolishing. Cabinet zero, David one. I like to love you every day. All right, time to get painting for the second time. And in my painting outfit. I have no idea whether that transition was horrible. Welcome to our third and <laughs> hopefully final day of this room makeover. David is off to work today, so that just leaves you and me to put the finishing touches on this room. First up, probably the easiest step of this entire room makeover is gonna be switching out David's bed sheets. I bought him these ones from Target, which remind me of my fashion icons, bananas in pajamas. Changing them out in one, two, three. That's probably a really awkward cut. I gotta get better at those, but here are the new bed sheets. Since they're a lighter color, they're gonna help open up the room a little bit and make it look bright and spacious. And now, it is our pleasure to present an extremely amateur woodworking tutorial with Ashley. Fun fact about David is that he has not owned a desk since he lived in the UCLA dorms freshman year, and that was like five years ago at this point. I honestly have no idea how he's been productive for the past five years without a desk. I think the answer is a lot of Adderall. 
So today I came up with a floating wall-to-wall -wall desk design. First of all, I think it's gonna be great for space optimization. Second of all, I just am not that good at woodworking. So I came up with the simplest design possible. To build this desk, you will need three 22.5 inch two by twos, one two by two, that's the length of your wall. For me, that's seven feet and two 12 inch planks of wood, also the length of your wall. Essentially, we're creating a little frame around the wall that our desktop can rest on. So first I'm drilling pilot holes into my wood with a drill, then attaching the wood to the wall with three inch long screws. You really wanna use some long boys and screw a lot of them. <coughs> I need to stop, it's getting annoying at this point. You really wanna use a generous amount of screws so your desk is extra sturdy and it won't like casually rip out of the wall and crush you. Cons of buying the cheapest drill possible off of Amazon is that my drill bit got stuck in this piece of wood and it will not come back out. I've tried like reattaching it, tightening it. She's stuck. So you do what you gotta do. I just have another piece of wood. I've drilled a hole that matches up with this drill bit and we're just gonna put it on top, screw it in place. Nobody will be the wiser. <laughs> After my little frame was all finished, I painted it white so it would blend more seamlessly into the walls. Next, it's time to lay down our large planks that act as the tabletop and then stain them a nice, deep, poopy brown color that match the floors perfectly. touch in David's little office corner, I framed these 50s ads for him. I found these at a vintage t-shirt store and it really made me want to save magazines from like nowadays or my magazines from the 2000s because one day hipster trash little kiddos like me are gonna pick them up and think that they're super cool. In David's last room, he pretty much kept all of his stuff in a giant pile underneath his bed. So in this room, I thought I'd help David stay a little bit more organized by giving each of these cabinets a specific theme instead of just having it like a giant area for general stuff. So for our closet cabinet, this conveniently already comes with a bar for hanging clothes. Now I wanted to switch out this bar for a really cool like industrial pipe detail that would look a lot more fancy than this like random piece of wood. But again, whoever built this cabinet did too damn well. This thing is like stuck in here, it's not coming out. So instead I'm gonna kind of do a poor man's pipe, which is basically just painting this piece of wood with a glossy black paint. Nobody's actually gonna think it's a pipe, but I figured it would be a nice contrast detail and it would match with this black cabinet below. Hello and welcome to this middle section, which will soon be a little kitchenette area. David and I already moved his mini fridge into the bottom of this cabinet, but obviously this needs a little bit more storage to hold all of his food. We're gonna kind of do like an open pantry concept, which is just a really obnoxious way of saying that I'm gonna build two shelves into this wall. I wanted to do this kind of industrial, like manly vibe since the rest of the room is so light, stereotypically. Like you're gonna want a couple dark accents in a male themed room. I don't know, societal standards of gender are very strange. So for these shelves, I've already stained a piece of wood, this lovely dark color that matches our hardwood that we installed earlier. And I'm gonna attach them to the wall with this industrial, this is literally just plumbing pipes that I attached together. I love how plumbing is considered aesthetic now. These brackets are pretty self-explanatory to attach, but I will explain nonetheless. I lined up the brackets to the wall, marked where I needed to drill with a pen, and then drilled some small pilot holes so that my screws could slide in nice and easily into the wall, then screwed those babies in, put the wood on top, and there you go. Now you have some nice industrial shelves that didn't cost like $120 at West Elm. I also picked up a couple little ceiling hooks for extra storage solutions. Oh yeah, I'm basically gonna screw this into the ceiling and then David's pans can hang all fancy-like. And I also screwed in some smaller hooks to hold David's cooking utensils. Finally, we have this bedside cabinet that's kind of gonna be David's bedside desk area. David wanted me to install this mirror for um, bedside activities. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. Also really nice to have a mirror right across from a window because it reflects the light and then makes the whole room look more spacious and light. And of course a best rest room makeover would not be complete without a frankly absurd number of plants. I actually handmade this little macrame plant hanger. Recently I've developed an unhealthy obsession with macrame -ing. I don't know what's wrong with me, but it's just therapeutic as hell. And macrame string was cheaper than my copay on a therapist. So I'll take it. Anyways, I digress. Here's a plant. 
to keep David company. The one thing I have no idea how to fix in this room is how ugly this AC unit is and how it's like duct taped into the wall. Frankly, if it was me, I'd probably just take the AC unit out altogether and suffer for the aesthetic. But David is not as fucking crazy as I am. So instead I have a plan to kind of dress up this corner and cover at least a little bit of the AC unit and well, you'll just leave it at that. And over in this corner, which is right underneath David's TV, I thought I would install two more shelves, basically in the exact same style that I did in the kitchen. I have some thick boys. These are one inch, really cheap planks of wood that I stained a dark color so they look a little bit more bougie. Then I got my pipe nipples that I can poke out of the wall. All right, I think that just about completes this room. I'm gonna go get David and I'll show you and him the finished product. I think it came out really well. I'm really excited. Your hands smell so bad. I'm so sorry. Ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow, that is so good. Do you actually like it or are you just acting for the video? No, I was gonna try and act and make a joke, but I can't because it looks so good. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, that looks so good. Uh, do you think we can change it back to carpet? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it would look that different, but the finishing touches like really finished it up. Yeah, no, I feel like the last 10% looks like the like 80%. Yeah. So it's like the 2080 rule. Like the last 20% <laughs> looks like 80% of the yeah. work. We still have to buy you a chair, but maybe we'll go thrifting for that another day. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope this inspires you guys to make over your room or your dorm or your apartment. You know, you don't have to like replace the hardwood in your apartment, but like, <laughs> change out the bed sheets, hang a picture. Make a little macaroni plant hanger. I don't know. <laughs> How do you feel? Do you feel more ready to finally make that apartment makeover, babe? <laughs> I'll see you guys next week. Bye!